girl Wakeji Kamore and welcome to Reflections by Wakeji Kamore. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you're having a fantastic day wherever it is that you are and whatever time it is that you get to watch this Bible summary. If this Bible summary is helpful, is blessing you in any form, way or shape, please do remember to subscribe, to like, to comment and most importantly, to share it with someone else. So today we're going to be looking at Deuteronomy chapter 8. So I'm going to be reading it from easy to read version, word for word. So let's do that and let's see what Moses is telling the Israelites today. So let's do that. Let's do this. All right. So Deuteronomy chapter 8 says, You must obey all the commands that I give you today, because then you will live and grow to become a great nation. You will get the land that the Lord promised your ancestors and you must remember the entire trip that the Lord your God has led you through these 40 years in the desert. He was testing you. He wanted to, to make you humble. He wanted to know that it, what is in your heart. He wanted to know if you would obey his commands. He humbled you and let you be hungry. Then he fed you with manna, something that you did not know about before. It was something your ancestors have nev had never seen. Why did the Lord do this? Because he wanted you to know that, they, this, that it is not just bread that keeps people alive, but people's lives depend on what the Lord says. Let me just repeat that. Why did he do this? Because he wanted you to know that it is not just bread that keeps people alive, but people's lives depend on what the Lord says. This is the same verse that Jesus repeated when he was being tempted in the desert where he says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by the word of God. This is exactly what it, it is. This is the exact verse that um, Jesus repeated. So this, for, this past 40 years, your clothes did not wear out and your feet did not swell. You must remember that the Lord your God teaches and corrects you as, your, as a father teaches and corrects his son. You must obey the commands of the Lord your God. Follow him and respect him. The Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with rivers and pools of water. Water flows out of the ground and in the valleys and in the hills. It's a land that has wheat and barley, grapevine, fig trees and pomegranates. It is a land with olive oil and honey. Then you will have plenty of food and everything that you need. It is a land where the rocks are iron. You can dig copper out of the hills. You will have all you want to eat. Then you will praise the Lord your God, the God, the Lord your God for the good land that he has given you be careful don't forget the lord your god be careful to obey the commands laws and rules that i give you as in man i feel like this has been repeated so many times in this chapter in this in this uh, book then you will have plenty to eat and you will have built you will build good houses and live in them your cattle sheep and goats will grow large you will get plenty of gold and silver you will have plenty of everything when that happens, you must be careful not to become proud. You must not forget the Lord your God. You were slaves in Egypt, but you made, he made you free and brought you out of that land. He led you through the, that great and terrible desert where there were poisonous snakes and scorpions. The ground was dry and there was no water anywhere, but he gave you water out of a solid rock. In the desert, he fed you manna something your ancestors had never seen. He tested you to make you humble so that everything would go well with you in the end. Don't ever say to yourself, I got all this wealth by my own power and ability. Remember the Lord your God is the one who gives you the power to do these things. I like this verse. Remember the Lord your God is the one who gives you the power to do these things. So it's, in another version it says, it is God who gives us the power to make the wealth. But I like the part that follows most he says he does this because now it explains why god is doing this he says he does this because he wants to keep the agreement that he made with you with your ancestors as he is doing today why does the lord give people the power to give them to make wealth because he wants to keep the agreement that he made with their ancestors as he's doing today don't ever forget the lord your god don't ever follow other gods or worship and serve them if you do that i warn you today you will surely be destroyed. The Lord is destroying other nations for you. But if you stop listening to the Lord your God, you will be destroyed just like them. And that is basically the end of that chapter. 
you know what i almost feel <laughs> a bit sorry about how you know reading how the israelites were disciplined by god how they were not i mean they were not uh, they didn't have water at some point how they didn't have food at some point and then god gave them food and even just the fact that they were disciplined in the in the wilderness after disobeying god so many so many times and i kind of feel sorry in the same way that i usually feel sorry when i see a mother beating a child you know to discipline them i usually feel like oh yeah leave them leave them alone <laughs> But I know that it is important to discipline children. Actually, the Bible advocates for it. And my mom used to love that verse that says, spoil, no, spare the rod and spoil a child. Like, I feel like that was my mom's favorite verse. The Bible actually advocates for discipline because God also disciplines people. So let me ask, if you saw a teenager who was unruly, he does whatever it is that he wants at whatever time that he wants, he's rude to everyone he's, that he encounters, he insults his superiors, and it's just simply uncontrollable, you would, the first thought in your mind, or if you, if the first thing that would come to your mind, if not you saying it out loud, would be, who are his parents? Who are his parents? Because according to you, looking at that child, the parents would have failed at parenting. So the thing is, a loving parent is a parent who disciplines. A loving parent is a parent who disciplines. And in the same way, a loving God is a God who disciplines. You cannot claim to love a child if you don't discipline them. You cannot claim to love a child if you're not teaching them good values. You cannot claim to love a child if you're just letting them just do whatever it is that they want. That is actually not how love looks like. And God cannot claim to love us if he doesn't discipline us. I like the Hebrews chapter 12 verse 6 and Proverbs chapter 3 verse 12. Kenda says the same thing. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 6 and Proverbs chapter 3 verse 12. It says the same thing. It cements the, the discipline thing. It says, for the Lord disciplines those that he loves. For the Lord disciplines those that he loves. And he chast chastises every son that he received. He disciplines every son that he receives. So every time someone gives their life to Christ, they become the son of God. They become the daughter of God. So God actually disciplines every son that he gets. So discipline is going to come your way. If you don't get disciplined by God, imagine, ask yourself, there are some questions that I should, you should ask yourself. And I also acknowledge that in this verse that God is just, yet he is merciful. And he's, I mean, he's just, and in the same chapter, he's being faithful, he's being merciful. And we are reminded that, 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 that God disciplined the Israelites, but also for those 40 years that were, they were being disciplined. God made sure that their clothes didn't wear out. As in, by the time your clothes are not wearing out, God, that, that takes a whole miracle. And their feet do not swell. Other versions say that their feet did not get any blisters. And I mean, <laughs> how is it that you're walking for 40 years and your feet are not getting blistered and your clothes are not getting torn out, worn out? So the thing is, I once went, I once went for camp. <laughs> it was a boot camp. Worst mistake I'll ever, I will never do a boot camp ever. Not unless you guys drag me and you tell me that they're going to, there's going to be choma, then I will come. And then if I find a boot camp, I will leave. So I went, went, once went for a boot camp and they made us walk from 10 a.m. 10 a.m. guys to 7 p.m. 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Like those are so many, so many hours of walk. Of walking. Yes, we were making several stops, but still the stops are not enough. There were like 20 minutes of, of sitting down and then continuing with the journey. And I only had a water bottle. One water bottle. It was one liter of one of water in a bottle. And let me tell you, <laughs> in that journey, in that walking, in that for me it feels like 40 years of walking. I felt like even the water bottle was too heavy. So I threw it somewhere in a bush. I was just like, mm, 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 mm. even this water is actually really heavy and it is dragging me behind and I don't want to carry this weight and I'm done. I almost cried. I almost got on a motorbike on that journey. It was the hardest physical activity that I've ever been part of and that I will ever be part of. Aki, I think I died a little in that. If I was a cat that had nine lives, I'm sure i left one life in that physical life, in that walk it was so so hard now imagine moving from one camp to another walking in the desert for a whole 
40 years. I mean, the paper records that there was no water. Water is coming from a rock because it's a desert. You're walking in the wilderness for 40 years. Oh my God. And not having your clothes torn and not having blistered feet. That is nothing short of a miracle. Completely nothing short of a miracle. So God disciplines. But even in the consequences of this discipline, even in this discipline that he actually sustains us, God is both just and then he's merciful. At the same time, like I meet perfectly at this perfect point that God is just and God is merciful. And in these characters, these two characters of being just and being merciful are actually compelled by love. God disciplines us because he loves us. And God is merciful to us because he loves us. As in these two characters are actually being driven by love. The fact that he's disciplining us is because he loves us. And the fact that he's merciful, even in the time that we are being disciplined, even in the consequences of our own, you know, our own troubles, that he's merciful and he sustains us because he loves us. As in we are loved either way. We are loved Either way, we are loved when we are being disciplined and we are loved when God is sustaining us in our discipline. So it's just so amazing to know that Yani, those two, those two characters of God are compelled by love. That he disciplines us because he loves us and he is merciful to us because he loves us. We are loved either way. This is your girl Wakeji Kamore and this has been Reflections by Wakeji Kamore. Mm-hmm.